Welcome everybody, I'm Dave D, Chief Marketing Officer of GKIC, and in this video you're going to discover innovative, powerful, and almost secret ways to generate leads and drive traffic to your website from my all-star panel of experts headed by none other than the millionaire maker himself, Dan Kennedy. Dan Kennedy is the world's number one marketing expert and has written numerous books uh, and has helped tens of thousands of business owners from every corner of the world make dramatically more money and transform their businesses and their lives. Joining Dan here in the studio are two of his all-star students, Brittany Lynch. Brittany is a former Google Insider and is known as the number one traffic and conversion expert. And Don Crowther. Don is an internet marketing and social media expert who teaches business owners how to leverage social media to increase their reach, results, and ROI. And joining me by Skype are two other Dan Kennedy Star students, Rich Sheffron. Hi Dave, hi Brittany, hi Don, hi Dan, hi everyone. And Jeff Walker. Rich is the CEO of Strategic Profits, a company dedicated to helping entrepreneurs make more profits, get more time off, and grow a business they can walk away from without affecting profits. Jeff Walker is a creator of the famous product launch formula and teaches business owners not only how to launch products, but build real businesses and live large. Welcome everyone. Dan, let's start with you. The first question I have is a lot of businesses, whether they're online or offline, brick and mortar, they have a philosophy of build it and they will come. What is, what is wrong with that thinking? Build the product, build the business and people will flock to it. What if they don't come? <laughs> I mean, that's right. what's wrong with it, is right. what if they don't come, right? So it's, um, it, it, it sort of dates to a time. I mean, the, the philosophy, the idea that that's what you can do comes from the era of Ralph Waldo Emerson, who mm -hmm. said, build a better mousetrap a day, we'll beat a path to your door. However, there weren't a lot of mousetraps, there weren't mm -hmm. a lot of doors. Right? Whereas today, there's six bazillion options. And pretty much you don't have to, you, you got to give somebody a pretty good reason to leave their house because in reality, they can access almost all the options without even leaving their house. So, you know, you look at, so I just saw recently in our community where you're taping, um, six or seven people just try, they just started to do a f once a week farmer's market, you mm -hmm. know, so they got themselves a parking lot and they each got a pickup truck or a booth or, you know, whatever. And one of them's a baker and one of them's got, so they're there. And they got a big sign, and they're waiting for people to show up. And they're probably going to be there for about three weeks, and then we're never going to see them again. Because, right. again, that dates to a time. I mean, so what they should have done, of course, is created all kind of lead flow and lead capture before they ever got there. Mm -hmm. If they pooled their money, there's inexpensive offline things they could do in that environment, every door, direct mail, Valpac, et cetera. They could have built social media. They could have driven everybody to free organic cooking classes Absolutely. online, built themselves a database, and then been able to drive people to where it is that they were. So the, the, the idea that you, that you enunciated is then made worse by the person who thinks they have a really, 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 really awesome thing that they have built, <laughs> which you know will be magnetic because of its awesomeness. <laughs> right. and, and again, it's very antiquated and it's very dangerous. The thing itself uh, rarely has enough magnetic power. Um, you need to be able to move people to it. Mm -hmm. Don and Brittany, do you find the same thing with people who are online and have websites? They spend all their time building beautiful websites and talk a little bit about that and the problems with that. Well, the worst is when they go out and they spend tens of thousands of dollars getting somebody to do this professional website for them and nothing happens at all. So the key is, as Dan brought up, you've got to have that lead flow and you've got to have some automated systems that bring people in. You've got to do well with the SEO, you've got to do well with the social media, all the different areas that drive people there and build your expertise so that then they're coming. And then you've got to give them great stuff once they come so they keep coming. Right so that you can build a long-term customer here. See, the, the other thing about that, if I may, is the, the build it and they'll come approach is also flawed because it, it comes to random chance. Mm -hmm. So the, the analogy in personal life would be, let's assume Brittany decides she wants to go find a rich husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
You don't have one yet, do no. you? No. Okay, okay, good luck in that. Thank so, you. so <laughs> let, let's assume, yeah, call the toll-free number yeah. at the bottom of your we screen. We will be putting the toll-free uh, number at the, end of, uh, at the end of this, so make sure you stay tuned uh, we, for the We have just thing. added another bonus. Uh, <laughs> so what is she going to do for uh, lead capture Well, <laughs> so, so the old approach, right, is Brittany gets herself all prettied up, and she goes to the best cocktail lounge in town, and she hangs out. And she, so she's built it, and they will come, and she hopes they come, but she's subject to random chance of who is there that night at that moment, mm -hmm. not with someone else, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas now, if you look, so people use Match.com, they, you know, they use dating websites, they use social media. Before that, smart people did print. Our friend Gary Albert, mm -hmm. you know, did print. And so now you're exercising some control. If she wants a really rich husband, she would advertise in Investor's Business Daily. She would you, you are know, doing she that, would right? Hang out, <laughs> she would hang out in the private jet terminals. I mean, she would go to classic car shows. She wouldn't go to the neighborhood. Right. So there are lead generation principles that have really changed the way all smart people do almost everything. And the dumb ones are still in their business life getting themselves all prettied up parking themselves on a stool and taking random chance. Got it. So Brittany, um, when you first got started with your business, what was some of you I mean obviously you had a website but you didn't have any traffic. What are some what is the first thing that you did that someone could do to start driving start generating some leads because that's the key. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, the first thing that I did was I had my website put up, but I didn't really spend that much time on it. Um, to your point earlier, a lot of people spend so much time building their website, and then they think that because it's up that they're automatically going to get traffic. Um, and even worse, they have sometimes not the best ideas. I had one customer come up to me who had spent like hours and hours and hours creating this info product on how to find free parking in this town of like a thousand people. And, <laughs> which is just... <laughs> that's you know, good. Yeah. yeah that's good. One of the better ones. Anyways. Better be selling that baby for about a million dollars. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I said. So, um, you know, and he didn't have any traffic plan, right? So uh, on, top, on top of the terrible niche idea, he had spent all this time building a website and had no plan on how to get that um, that that book out to and out to the market. So for me, I, I always focus on um, using traffic. Uh, where can I get the traffic for the best possible cost and get the fastest form of traffic to my site in order to start testing it? So I usually use AdWords. Um, obviously, I used to work there, so um, I have had some experience working on it and, and getting some really good results. But AdWords is a really great way to start testing first and then going to the other traffic forms like direct mail and social media and, and that bit. And too. just in case anyone doesn't know, what is AdWords? Uh, if you go to Google and you type in, um, you know, uh, hotels in Florida, that AdWords is actually the ads on the right-hand side or on the top section um, that come up and um, you know call to your attention that um, that you can you can you can book a hotel there. So you pay per click. So they're so they're so they're basically mini classified ads. Really, is what they are. Yeah. And then when someone clicks on the ad, it goes to your site, and you only pay though. When they That's absolutely the right. That so in theory, you're getting a really qualified person to your site because okay. they're engaged in that search. So Don, same question to you. What is like when you first got started? Because there's a lot of people watching us who are just getting started. What, is, what, what, what did you do, or what would you recommend that somebody do? Maybe that's even a better question. Well, the first thing is that you need to figure out who your target audience is that you want, that you're trying to reach and what their needs are. Then once you've got that identified, then you start producing information about the area of your expertise that they want to know. You start putting that up on a blog or a website. Uh, you can use direct mail. You can use lots of different techniques here. And then you start promoting that through social media, through online advertising, through direct mail, through all these different kinds of areas so that you're driving people to the information. I actually don't recommend that someone come up with a site that starts selling something first. Mm -hmm. Spend a while generating a huge body of traffic, a huge group of people who are on your list because as you do them, one of the key things that has to be on your website is you have to have what we call an opt-in form, mm -hmm. a place where people can put in their name and, and their email address to get more information from you. Then you are sending out regular information to that and every one of those people is now worth money to you in the future. Got it. Got it. So, so Dan, the online guys um, only really are talking about driving traffic online using online methods. 
But the truth is, you consult with almost all of the famous big gurus. They they, they come and they pay eighteen grand, eighteen five for a eighteen eight. Eight, 18 eight now. Let's not be discounting. Okay, we will. Okay. <laughs> eighteen eight uh, to come uh, for a day of consulting with you. Um, why do you tell them why this is like just using online is almost a recipe for a disaster? And, and what 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 is like some secrets that you tell them about integrating online and offline? To be fair, just using offline is a recipe for disaster too. Um, the uh, uh, the worst number in business is one. Um, the next worst number is two. <laughs> but the, the, the more you are dependent on one means or only a few means of attraction, the more vulnerable you are to disruption. And so, like right now, um, everybody who's dependent on radio and television in at least nine to 11 states is gonna be fundamentally out of business for September, October, and November because we have a presidential election in play in which billions of dollars are gonna be spent buying radio and TV time at prices no sane marketer will ever pay. If you are, um, if you are an online only marketer, one of the ways you're subject to disruption is a major news event that draws everybody to go watch CNN. I mean, so you're in trouble there. So, and then mechanically, all these things can have their ups and downs. Uh, uh, Google, where she came from, you know, they stay up all night figuring out how to change the rules tomorrow morning. Yeah, in the green room, she I was mean, just saying you know, that. Well, it is that. Yeah, yeah it is that. So, and, and by the way, see, he's actually an old direct mail guy. Okay, so uh, we had to show her a stamp, but is, is, you know, is it, he had to, and the key word would be old, old, old direct mail. Right? Are you coming? I mean, old? He, so here's the thing: um, Eric Schmidt of Google described it as a giant cesspool, right? and so one of the things that I work with online-oriented marketers about is how to get their lead, their prospect and their customer or client, even if they got them that way, out of there to make certain sales to them in more of a one-on-one -on -one vacuum rather than a competitive bazaar. You know, so the minute you, when you are doing your selling in the online environment, you are really selling at a swap meet with a lot of distractions all around you. When you are selling one-on-one, -on -one, through direct mail, it's more akin to sending a salesman to the door who sits down at the kitchen table with them. Now, that doesn't mean you can't integrate in the opposite direction, because you can. I have clients who use a lot of direct mail to drive online, and actually their sales event, be, be it video or w webinar or whatever, happens online. And then the question is, do you take them back offline? So integration is all things in different order for different purposes. What about somebody like Brittany who doesn't even know what a stamp is uh, or, 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 or an envelope? Well, we, we had to drive her over to the post office. That's right. We drive her over <laughs> to the know? post office. But he, here's what I hear from a lot of people, Dan, and I'd like you guys to comment as well. God, that's expensive. It's, you know, it's, it's scary. I don't know. It's so much more work to send a letter off. So I, somebody comes online, i got to send them something offline. It really freaks people out a little bit. Address that. Sloth is sloth, you know. I mean... <laughs> It, 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 I mean, that's, both those things are true. So in raw expense numbers, um, obviously email, social media cheap, especially if you don't value time, right? If you don't actually assign dollars to the time being consumed, direct mail gets to one of the most expensive things you can do.